The Patriot missile defense system is the most formidable system in the world for defending against incoming enemy aircraft and ballistic missiles. It's respected worldwide to such an extent that when the US first spoke of sending Patriot batteries to defend the skies over Ukraine, Putin was concerned. Russia threatened that this move could lead to an escalation of the conflict and increase the risk of direct involvement of the American army in hostilities. It's respected because it works. A full Patriot system costs roughly $1 billion, and each of the Pac-3 missiles run around $4 million each. This has led to some controversy, especially when one of these seven-figure missiles is used to shoot down attacks from cheap drones that only cost a few hundred dollars each. But that's not what the Patriot system was designed to do. It was invented to save lives, lives under attack by the most advanced fighters and missiles that a modern military can muster. In 1991, during the Gulf War, was its time to shine. The U.S. Army had established a barracks in Saudi Arabia, and to protect the lives of American soldiers, a Patriot battery was set up to provide long-term air defense. On that day, Iraq fired a Soviet-made Scud missile with the U.S. Army barracks in its sights. Although it's not a true hypersonic missile in the full sense of the word, a Scud missile can travel up to 3,800 miles per hour. That's Mach 5 territory, meaning it can move at hypersonic speeds. That's insanely fast, covering a full mile in less than one second. Even so, the Patriot system was designed with this in mind. It has the targeting precision needed to track and intercept these fast-moving missiles. Except a Patriot battery is designed to be mobile. Trucks and trailers are a core part of the platform. It's designed to be moved around regularly and on short notice providing immediate air defense wherever it's most needed and confusing enemy intelligence by never remaining in one location for too long. This detail would prove to be disastrous. The computer system on board uses an internal clock to track time down to the tenth of a second. This logging starts as soon as the system is booted up, and it's this data that's used to calculate the precise timing needed to stop an incoming missile traveling at many times the speed of sound. The computer stores the current time inside a binary number that is 24 digits long. After 19 days of continuous operation, this number is full. It would require more digits to keep counting than the binary number is long, which forces it to roll over, much like a car odometer rolls over once it runs out of digits. This isn't a problem. Once the number fills up, the computer just stores the current time somewhere else and starts the time again at zero. It can do some math to reconcile the figures, and it all works out fine. Since the system tracked time in tenths of a second, it kept adding 1 to the current number after 10 instances of 0.1 second passing. When it stored the current time in full seconds, the computer multiplied the number by 0.1 to convert it from tenths of a second to a full second. And this is the problem. Computers use binary ones and zeros to do math, so instead of multiplying this number by 0.1, it multiplies it by a 24-bit binary number that is the equivalent of 0.1. Except it's not an exact equivalent, just close enough that it normally works out the same. Instead of 0.1, the computer multiplied by a number that's more like 0.0999999 and so on. As a result, each time a full second is stored, it gets thrown off by about one one hundred thousandth of a second. That's really not much at all, and it had never posed a problem in the past. But at the time the Scud missile was inbound, the Patriot battery had been online for about 100 hours. At this point, it had updated the elapsed seconds about 360,000 times, with each update throwing the number farther off by one one hundred thousandth of a second. For a Scud missile traveling at over a mile per second, this adds up to the system thinking that it should be about a third of a mile away from where it actually is, and that just doesn't work. As a result, the Patriot system failed. The Scud missile found its target. 28 American soldiers died, 110 were put in the hospital, and another 150 were left with some sort of injury from the attack. This one strike was responsible for over one-third of American casualties suffered during the Gulf War. One tiny oversight in how binary numbers work led to horrific consequences. Sadly, the U.S. military had realized this problem a few weeks prior to the attack and had sent out a message informing the operators to not let the system run for a long period of time without restarting it. Had the system been rebooted each day to reset the timer, it likely would have been able to stop the attack, but for someone tasked with operating the Patriot system, those are pretty vague instructions. 
A long period of time means different things to different people, and the 100 hours it was running, roughly four days, probably didn't seem that long. On the day after the attack, a disk containing a software patch to correct this problem was delivered to the base. It had been in transit all along, it just didn't quite show up in time. Over the decades since the Gulf War, ongoing updates and improvements to the Patriot system have continued, and problems like this have been worked out. As a result, it is by far the best at what it does, and the sight of a Patriot defense battery allows citizens of bullied countries like Ukraine to breathe a huge sigh of relief. Thank you for watching this video. To see more similar content in the future, don't forget to subscribe to Rocket Surgery. And here's another video that you might want to check out next.